Well, hello, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wasman, and today we are going to be wrestling with some challenging multi-step story problems. We're in our math journals on pages 270 and 271, Unit 8, Lesson 1. Let's take a look at the premise for cracking a number story code. It says, every year, Blythe Elementary School holds a contest. Each class is given seven problems about the school. The answers are part of a code that tells where a hidden prize is located. The class that cracks the code and gets to the location first wins the prize. Help Mrs. Fitzgerald's class win the prize by solving the problems below and cracking the code. So let's take a look at the first problem. Okay. This is the school custodian, Mr. Granger, brought every pencil he found on the floor this week to the school lost and found. At the end of the week, there were 126 pencils in the lost and found. Mr. Granger said he found three pencils in one classroom and five pencils in each of three classrooms. He then found an equal number of pencils in each of the nine remaining classrooms. How many pencils did he find in each of those nine classrooms? So again, friends, whenever I approach a number story problem, I want to attack it with a strategy. And of course, I like to use the strategy of ruckus, which is to reread the problem, underline the question, circle the important information, come up with an action plan, and then solve. Okay. So as I reread this problem, I'm going to be circling important information, and then when I find the question, I will underline it. The school custodian, Mr. Granger, brought every pencil he found on the floor this week to the school lost and found. At the end of the week, there were 126 pencils in the lost and found. Mr. Granger said he found three pencils in one classroom and five pencils in each of three classrooms. He then found an equal number of pencils in uh, uh, in in each of the nine remaining classrooms. How many pencils did he find in each of those nine classrooms? Okay. So you noticed I circled uh, different pieces of information with different colors because I wanted to uh, break this problem down because there's more than one operation we have to attempt in order to find the answer. Okay. So let's take this problem again step by step. We know that there are a hundred and twenty-six pencils. And we need to figure out how many pencils did Mr. Ranger, the custodian, find in nine classrooms. Well, we know that there were three pencils found in one classroom. So the first thing I want to do is I want to subtract 126 minus 3. Now with a little bit of mental math, you can figure out that 6 minus 3 is 3, so that would give us a total of 123. Okay, so that's the first one. Five pencils were found in each of three classrooms. Well, now I need to subtract another amount, but this time I'm going to subtract 123 minus 5 times 3. So I put that operation in parentheses because I have to figure out what 5 times 3 is before I can subtract it from 123. Well, since I know that my multiplication tables, 5 times 3 I know is 15. So now I'm going to be subtracting 123 minus 15. And then I want to set that up vertically because I can tell I'm going to have some regrouping involved. Because I can't take 5 from 3, so i got to borrow from the 10, making 2 10s into 1 10, and 3 1s into 13 1s. 13 minus 5 is 8, 1 minus 1 is 0, I bring down 100, so my new total is 108. So 123 minus 15 equals 108. Now what I have to do is I have to take 108 and divide that by 9. Now, 
I can set up that problem with the algorithm, like so. For those of you who may not know your uh, timetables off the top of your head, but I already know that 108 is the product of 9 times 12. So my answer here is he found 12 pencils in each of the nine remaining classrooms. Well, those, those students in those classrooms, they're messy. But just for fun, I'm going to go through the long division strategy to show you why 12 is my quotient. So 9 does not go into 1 uh, equally, at least with a whole number. But if I skip uh, the process of dividing, multiplying, subtracting, bringing down, checking, repeating that 9 does not go into 1, I can go with 9 dividing into 10, or the 10 tens that make up 108. I can get one group of 9 out of 10, because 1 times 9 is 9. That leaves me with a difference of 1. And then when I bring down the 8, that reveals that I have 18, and of course I know that 9 times 2 is 18. And that's how I get my answer of 12 as my quotient. Okay, so I have now completed the first answer. Now let's get to the point where we crack the code. Okay, problem number eight says, now it's time to crack the code. Transfer the answer to each question in problems one through seven to the boxes below. For example, the answer to problem one goes in the first box, and the answer to problem two goes in the second box, and so on. Each number stands for a letter, hint, 1 equals A, 2 equals B, 3 equals C. So if my first answer for number 1 is 12, I have to think about what is the 12th letter of the alphabet. Well, if I just count off on my hands, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. L is the 12th letter of the alphabet, so my first letter is L. Okay, And that is... One step closer to solving the problem or cracking the code. Okay? And that's how we're going to go about solving all these story problems. We're just going to look for uh, the strategy to come up with the answer. As you can see, the first problem had multiple steps in order for me to find the answer of 12. Uh, and then we were able to uh, find the first letter of the uh, missing word. Uh, let's try one more problem. I'm going to skip down to problem number four. As I read the problem, I'm going to be circling important information and underlining the question. It says here that there are 346 students in the school, and in the morning, many students go to special classes. 21 to music, 16 to technology, 24 to the gym, 19 to art, and 10 to Spanish. The rest stay in regular classes. Eight regular classes each have 27 students. The rest of the regular classes have only eight students. And how many total teachers are in the school? Now again, I circled different parts of information with different colors. Again, just as a way to visually separate some of the uh, steps in my problem. Okay? If you're doing this at home with uh, paper and pencil, it's all going to be monochrome. But the first part of this problem tells us that there are different special area classes uh, that some of the students go to in the morning. 346 students total and 21 kids go to music, 16 to technology, 24 to gym, 19 to art, and 10 to Spanish. So the first thing I need to do is I need to reduce this number of students by these first five special area classes. So I'm basically going to create a subtraction problem. 346 is my starting number. I'm then going to subtract 21. That gives me a difference of 325. Then I'm going to subtract 16. 
have to do a little regrouping here. That gives me a difference of 309. And I'm going to subtract 24. And again, I have to do some regrouping. But I can do the mental math. 30 minus 2 is 285. Now I'm going to subtract 19 from that number. Don't need a subtraction symbol there. And again, more regrouping is involved. 15 minus 9 gives me 6. 7 minus 1 is also 6, and then bring down the 2. And then I'm going to subtract 266 minus 10, which is going to give me a difference of 256. So now that I know where some of the students go to their special area classes, now I need to figure out where the rest of the students go for their regular classes. Now it says eight regular classes, each have 27 students. The rest of the regular classes only have eight students. How many total teachers are in the school? So I have to figure out where eight groups of 27 students land. So I need to multiply 27 times eight. I'm going to use partial products here. I'm going to multiply 20 times eight then 7 times 8, and then add those products together. That gives me a total of 256 minus 216, because my A classes of 27 students need to now be subtracted from my total here. leaves me a difference of 40. And then it says the rest of the regular classes only have eight students. Okay, so if I have 40 students, I'm going to divide them into groups of eight. I'm going to have five more groups of eight. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to figure out how many total teachers there are. Well, we do that by figuring out how many different classes there were all together. Okay, so starting with the special area classes, there were one, two, three, four, five classes, so that means five teachers, right? Uh, there were eight regular classes. That had 27 students in each, 27 times 8. Uh, so that gives us 8 more teachers. So 8 plus 5 is 13. And then we had to determine how many more classes were made up of only 8 students. And there was 5. 5 more classes. So that means 5 more teachers. Okay? So if I have 5 teachers for 5 special area classes and then eight teachers for uh, regular classes that have 27 students, plus five more classes that have smaller groups, that gives me a total of 18 classes. So that means there are 18 teachers. Well, you gotta have a teacher for each class, right? So my total number of teachers in the school is 18. So I'm gonna transfer that answer to my little code here. And of course, the 18th letter of the alphabet is R. So now we have one more letter clue to help us figure out the location of the super secret prize for cracking the code. So friends, that's what we have to do. We have to solve each of these number story problems, find the numeric answer, and then plot it in to figure out where to find the location. Okay? Each of these story problems, these number stories, have multiple steps, which will require you to 
slow down and to think about what is being asked of you. Okay, so when I utilize the strategy of fracas, that's a, a strategy to help me slow down and think about things. Okay, the answer isn't obvious. It's not just going to jump off of the page for you. So that means there might be multiple steps involved to solve each of these problems. So when you tackle each of these problems, use a little patience. Okay, don't get flustered. It might take more than one uh, uh, stab at it to figure it out. Now, after you give it a couple of tries and you're still kind of flummoxed, that's when you need to talk to your math teacher and ask for help. Okay, don't just suffer in silence. Don't just guess. Okay. All these problems were designed with fourth graders in mind, so it is possible for fourth graders to solve them. Uh, but in case you get stuck, talk to someone, okay? That's how we learn. We ask questions. We look for help. And then it's through that help that we uh, learn how to do things for ourselves. Okay. I hope this video helped you learn a little something. Uh, until we talk again, friends, have a good day. Thanks.